Hi all, I have another amazing game of Steinitz to show you. This was played against Augustus Mongredian in London 1862. So Mongredian, by the way, was a noted English amateur president of both the London and Liverpool chess clubs and did a lot to promote chess in both cities. And he played not just matches against uh, Steinitz, but also Maye, uh, Bledo, Hanstein, Morphy. He's played all the greats uh, of the time, Horowitz. Okay, so let's see this game. E4 from Steinitz. And we have the Scandinavian defence, as it's known uh, today, or, or the centre counter, as it was sometimes previously referred to. We have knight c3. The modern treatment is usually to play the queen to a5, and then like c6 and queen c7 is quite common later. But here we have queen d8, d4, and now usually black plays c6, knight f6, or g6 here. This move is played, which is a little bit on the passive side, it seems. Uh, knight f3, knight f6, bishop d3. White enjoys already a nice position where. This e file seems quite useful. That outpost square in particular seems quite useful. But um, here, black might be threatening positioning c5. We have bishop e3, which dissuades maybe c5 and adds a little bit more support for knight e5. Not that this pawn was able to be captured anyway because of that little tactic idea bishop takes h7. But just in case later, maybe pr primarily against c5, this is handy we have b6 knight e5 now bishop b7 and now the move f4 so white is taking perhaps you might argue some risk on the light squares but Tarsko once said a knight on e5 and the attack plays itself is that the case here knight bd7 queen e2 knight d5 which does mean that the h7 soft spot is slightly more vulnerable than it was. Knight takes d5. And now we have the move e takes d5. Yeah, this is an interesting decision. It blocks that bishop here, e takes d5. Um, maybe bishop takes d5 uh, could have been uh, considered in this position. Let's have a quick look. Bishop takes d5. Or is there a problem with it? Maybe white's better anyway after rook a d1, and that is a target. So anyway, this blocks in the bishop, which means actually the f3 square has become available. And Steinitz makes use of that immediately, rook f3. And there's an immediate idea in this position of just taking here now. That's very dangerous with rook h3. I'll give you an example. Say black casually played a6, then bang, bishop takes h7, rook h3 queen h5 and it's very difficult it's not it's not possible to defend this position okay so um we have the move f5 which parries bishop takes h7 the rook comes into h3 anyway threatening now queen h5 it's pretty direct uh this game g6 now g4 very direct trying to tear the black king to shreds open up these lines maybe even King h1 and rook g1 later might be possible. That's taken. And now a very, very nice move aesthetically is played by Steinitz. There's two very, very good moves. One is ordinary looking, which is queen takes g4. But the more aesthetically interesting one is played. Can you guess? OK, a lovely rook sack. It really look at black's pawns they've been totally diced and weakened uh, black took on e5 here instead of taking the rook immediately but now takes the rook queen takes g4 threatening a mate in two after queen takes and queen h7 that's defended now guess what white plays okay he makes use of the pinned pawn the power of the pin piece or pawn is illusionary, so that check, check, and now actually check here, check here, and now Steinitz plays a strong continuation, but there might actually be an even more clinical one, more smooth than what he played in the form of e6 here. This seems to be mating black, 
uh, very sh in short order after this Queen H7. Uh, yeah, this this looks absolutely murderous. The game continuation is is winning anyway. Check Queen E6. There's huge threats for Black to handle. Rook G7, Bishop G5. Black so pinned in this position uh, that you can't really do anything about the uh, to defend his king. Bishop takes G6. Check. That's taken. Queen takes G6. Check. And now celebrating another pin, rook f8 check, queen e8, queen takes e8 checkmate. This game uh, has, I, I, I believe, an attacking conciseness to it. Uh, I like the way the knight on e5 was used to spearhead an attack. And the classic opening in the f file, you can see that f file was dangerous during this attack. And, and look at the aggressive pawn chain here. Yeah, the, this is sort of is the attacking player's, you know, ag aggressive pawn chain. But in the game, yes, all the right sort of things to sort of hammer the soft spots were used in this game, and it was actually awarded for this tournament. Uh, apparently, the brilliancy prize. Yeah, so a very very nice, cute game. This one, I believe. Hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.